to the Hacking Your Health podcast with Ben Kenning and Dave Kennedy. Two guys heading out to hack body, mind, business, and beyond. We are here to provide a single source, bullshit-free guide to understanding your body and how you can live better for longer. Kennedy or Hacking Day from the Hacking Your Health podcast. Just want to say if you enjoy what we're doing here, what you're listening to, uh, please share us. We're all over Instagram, Discord, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Uh, check us out at we, you know, HTTPS wehack.health, uh, as well as our Discord server, which is discord.gg slash wehackhealth. Pretty much everything is wehackhealth. But, you know, thanks again for all the support, um, all of the stories that you're sharing. Uh, you know, share your successes, your struggles. That's what this community is here, here is for. That's why we do this podcast, and your energy supports us. So thank you so much, and I uh, hope you enjoy the podcast. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Ben Canning. And I'm Dave Kennedy. And this is Hacking Your Health Podcast. What is up, man? Dude, it's another week uh, of the podcast. I saw we have some new listeners that have been uh, making some waves on social media about how awesome, awesome the podcast is. So mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. love seeing that and uh, getting feedback from folks. Uh, it's always good to see Kev Cody. I think our last... Um, podcast on failure uh, was really well received on, you know, just struggles that you go through and kind of overcoming those and that type of stuff. So, you know, uh, appreciate the feedback from everybody. It's always great from a motivational perspective to get, you know, validation of what you're doing, because, you know, we're here, uh, you know, just bullshitting with one another and uh, having a good time and, ex you know, <laughs> expressing what we see, talking about research, talking about things that we go through. Um, and I'm glad that other people find that that valuable. And uh, we obviously want to continue to expand that. But, you know, things are great. Um, you know, it's been been a busy week with travel again. Uh, of course, I was in, uh, so I drove to Grand Rapids with uh, some of my folks here at Trusted Sec, and then uh, I presented the next day. And it was funny because uh, I had mentioned to one of our guys, HD, I'm like, "Hey, I'm going to go visit my grandma. Uh, she lives in Saugatuck, so I, you know, I used to like grow up in uh, over there in that Michigan area. And so uh, it was good to see her and go out to dinner and stuff like that. And um, but I, I was like, afterwards, I'll text you, and you know, hey, we can go out or whatever." Uh, and, and maybe get, grab a drink or something. And by the time I got home, it was like, I don't know, it was like 9.30 uh, p.m. And uh, from, from dinner at my grandma's. And I texted, I'm like, man, I really don't want to go out. I'm like, I'm so tired. Like, I just want to go to bed by 10. Like, because like 10 o'clock is like my new bedtime, right? And I'm like, Cause I, like, cause I, now you like getting up in the morning? Yeah, because I like getting up in the morning now. And I got, I got up this morning at 6 a.m. So or I actually got up at 5.45 this morning. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, so so I text uh, HD, I'm like, Hey man, do you still want to go out? Question mark, question mark. Can I please though? He's like, actually, I'm already like uh, at the hotel. We're good. I'm like, oh, thank God. I don't have to go out tonight. I can go to bed early. So <laughs> went to bed early, got my lift in uh, the next morning um, and uh, presented and then flew out to Wild West Hacking Fest. Uh, I got to get a good lift in with Travis from Trusted Sec. Uh, so that was really awesome. And um, just a, a good time. Had a good time at Wild West and everything else. But it's it's difficult because, you know, you don't have your scales there. You don't have the appropriate macro. So, you know, we've always talked about the struggles with travel, but just trying to stick with protein centric um, items. And I also uh, tried bull testicles for the first time. So that was uh, something new. Uh, it, it, the way that they're prepared just sounds know, violent. I don't necessarily know that liver king has his deep fried and buttered like you did, but i mean it's definitely <laughs> one step in the right direction i felt like i felt like i was uh, like inching my way into there right you know okay, like yeah. you know like this is my first step into eating multiple ball testicles i guess but uh bull testicles <laughs> not ball testicles but um but uh you know it, it was it was funny because like we're all sitting there uh, about to order and uh it's i think it's called like rocky mountain blue oysters or something like that so, it's something like that it's something like that and I thought it was oysters and I like oysters. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, I'm like, not sure I want oysters in the middle of Deadwood, South Dakota, but you know, I'm sure they're not the freshest out there, but I'm going to give them a shot. And I ordered them and, and I'm like, oh, they're breaded. I'm like, never mind. I don't, I don't want breaded uh, oysters. And the, uh, someone across the table was like, uh, hey, uh, you know, those are bull testicles. I'm like, oh, well, can we get three orders of those by any chance? So I ordered three <laughs> orders of the whole table so that everybody could experience the bull testicles. Uh, and how, tastes, how were like they? Chicken. It tasted like chicken. It was like chicken nuggets. It was fine. No issues. You know, once you get over the, why am I eating bull testicles in your mind? Uh, you, you, you focus on the taste 
And it was just like, like literally eating a flattened chicken. So what they do is they basically smash the testicle with a hammer um, and, then, and then they bread it and then they fry it. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Something has gone wrong since the last time we spoke to this podcast. Something has gone wrong along the way. The content has gone down. Stand out. I, 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 I get just a picture of our, our male population of audiences holding their, their areas right now. Like, oh. what are you doing? But, uh, you know, no, it was it was a good experience, but had a good time. But uh, back on track, obviously. I got my lifts in. You know, I trying to stay as healthy as possible. How did, yeah, yeah. how did you track them on my fitness pal? I actually bull testicles oh, is on my fitness cool. pal. Believe it or not, there is bull testicles on my fitness pal. So I was saved. I was saved. So How many it's actually got a, it's got it's got a decent amount of protein. I'm not gonna lie. Like you know, like okay, hey. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think each bull testicle had like six grams of protein. So I'm like, maybe Liver King's onto something. You got a high concentration of protein there. So maybe, maybe. I mean, I'll let you and Liver King work away with the bull testicles. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that you enjoyed them. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I, I probably will never do that again. Um, but at least I can say and I, I experienced bull testicles. So good. Yeah. In, How about you? in the How moment, you doing? Uh, I'm doing so good. Like genuinely. Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing I actually want to touch on is just what you're saying about the feedback in the podcast. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to say I almost forget that people listen to this. But I don't necessarily do this because people listen to it. If that makes sense, like. If we had five listeners and that was it, like I'd be cool with that. But one thing that I've noticed off the back of having multiple calls with people after this sort of launch of the new program and stuff like that, people from all over the world, like the feedback that they give, and it's almost like one of the coolest things is, you know, they talk about you and they talk about me and the conversation they have, and it's almost like everybody's just like friends and family, like it's one big collective unit of people. And that is sort of almost what I wanted us to have in terms of a podcast, because I know that the ones that, that I listen to the most are the ones that I enjoy the most. I feel like I'm in the room with the people and that's the sort of conversations I like to be involved in. And, and I hope that anybody listening to the bull testicle story feels like they're here in the room with us. And I just, it's just, I think because I've had so many calls from so many different people on here and so many different perspectives of people sharing and people, you know, in different companies being like, oh, you have to check out this podcast. Like it's been cool to hear that sort of feedback. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been experience. And again, appreciate yeah. everybody who's listening. It's just been, it's been a funny week in terms of calls and people, but other than that, um, I'm good, really good. I cannot wait to not have to prep for this photo shoot anymore. Um, <laughs> I actually considered if I could record this episode sitting down, cause I feel like my legs are about to fall off. Um, dude, every time I speak to you, <laughs> it is legs. And there was like one day where you're like, I'm training upper body today. I'm like, what? Like that's unusual well, today, dude. today, today it was legs and arms. <laughs> so, so you're not escaping the legs, even in your, no, arm no, session. <laughs> no, no, no legs and arms. Um, but then I've also been doing, I've up my cardio as well. And like, I don't know whether it's so much leg training or so much time on the bike, but I actually feel like my hip flexors and I know that this is not physiologically possible, but it feels like they're going to fall out. That's all the only way that I can descri describe them. It feels yeah. awful. So I did contemplate sitting down for this podcast, but I am standing, so it's absolutely fine. Aside from that, things are good. Um, I had a high calorie day on Sunday, which I really enjoyed. Um, Go sushi? I, I had sushi, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had sushi. I had a donut. I had a big bowl of oats. I had... Cold, like cold oats, right? Sweet. Yes, uncooked cold oats. Yes, just plenty there for it. The one thing actually, as I'll say about this for anybody who gives a shit, the, the one thing that I try and do on, on high days is eat foods that I know my body digests well, because there's nothing worse than, you know, if you want to go, if you want to sort of stay within plan and make sure you feel okay, yes, okay, you can have a high day, but there's no point in just going and eating fucking double cheeseburgers and pizzas because it will not be pleasant. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good inside. point on that too. It's like, you know, everything yeah. you talked about, like, Donuts actually are very easy to digest. It's, it's yeah. basically all simple carbohydrates. You, know, yeah. you start getting into like, and I only uh, had one. Like it wasn't donuts. Yeah, I only had one. Um, but you get you get into like pizzas, like heavy grease and fat yeah. and carbohydrates and all of this, you know, sugar and everything else that goes into the sauces. So your body's got to deal with a lot uh, when eating that type of stuff for sure. Yeah. So it wasn't just a total free fall. And actually, the the lesson for this was the last time I did a shoot. I did it with another guy called Ben. I know it's hard 
for you to believe that there's another band. There's another band. But yeah. we, we both used to coach in Jimco and he sort of challenged me last minute to do the shoot. But I remember coming up to it and we were both being coached by Callum at the time. Both had high days at the same time. And he was like going out for like burritos and like, like really almost like greasy, went out for French toast and pancakes and all this shit. But I just had more of the foods that I was used to digesting, bagels, oats, cereal, rice, things like that. And on the day, you could visibly see the difference in terms of like how we sort of filled out. So the, the, what you want to do is make sure that you get the, the food that your body can sort of absorb as best possible. So long story short, after I had that, I felt incredible in the gym Monday, Tuesday, today, not so much. Um, calories are super low this week, but almost, almost your day. The issue that I'm faced at the minute is I'm really struggling to get somebody to wax my entire body, which I know everybody, <laughs> I know that we're back to this this male grooming situation again, but I was on the phone to the girl who actually did it the very first time I did. And she was like, you do know that like, that's going to take like four hours. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, is there any way that we can just do like your chest and back? And I'm like, I really need my whole body done. She's like, when you say whole body, what do you mean? Like, no, 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 not like that. Like I just need my like legs done too. So the biggest issue I'm facing at the minute is I need to remove all the hair from my body <laughs> to then go and get my And you're a hairy on. dude, let's just be honest. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, I am, I am, I am. And it's very coarse and very dark hair too, which even yeah. is even other. So really I'm going to go tomorrow, I'm going to go down tomorrow and she's going to have a look at me for whatever reason. Yeah, you do like a pre-consulting, pre wax consulting Just to see if she wants to, wants to, wants to, to do it or not. Do it. So <laughs> I'm going to actually, uh, by the time we record next week, I will have had it done, hopefully. Um, so I'll be able to report back further, but that's genuinely the biggest struggle that I've faced at the minute. I've had a super productive, busy week, plenty of calls from literally people all over the world, people who, funny, like people who had only just found out about the podcast and were like, oh, this program will be perfect. And people who have been like, oh, I heard you and Dave speak at an event last year. And I've been thinking about this now at the time. And I'm like, it's just funny to see everybody, like what it sort of takes to, to push them over the edge in terms of actually book the call. So yeah. plenty of good calls, plenty of time spent building out the program and things. And as I sort of said to you during the week, like I thrive in situations like this whenever I have a lot of stuff to do, like everything needs to be done on a time because I actually have so much stuff to do. I thrive whenever I'm building something out and just everything, I mean, time wise coming up to shoot, probably not ideal, but everything is in a really good space. Long story short. You know, it's funny because uh, to, to kind of switch that to the cybersecurity side and when I'm coding, like if I if I have a project that I'm doing, whether it's, you know, a new tool or um, making an update to one of the existing tools that I write, or I'm just coding something, like for me, I'm the exact same way where like it's rewarding. I'm building something. It's challenging. Uh, it's something that I have to, set my mind to my mind racks really hard on it, and that's all I can focus on. And so when that happens, like it's one of those things where I really feel rewarded when I'm doing those and you know, that, that I'm able to do it. It was funny. Cause like uh, this weekend I was doing some coding on um, one of the open source projects called Trevor C2. And uh, I was coding for like, I don't know, I must've been coding for like three hours. I just like, went, went, you know, went into a zone and then I had to get some like service descriptions done that were like super high level. That is like not as rewarding uh, on the business side and the, like get my mind to flip and have to do that is really difficult for me because, you know, I'm going from like one part of the brain that is very analytical to go through and like build something and create something to something where I have to basically talk executive, like speak to something. It's like a different part of the brain. And uh, it's one of those things that is, you know, super, super challenging. And, you know, talking about, uh, challenging. Um, I went through a really big issue a number of years ago. I think this is prior to, to me meeting you. Um, but, and, and I'll explain why this relates to the, 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 what I was just talking about here in a second, but, hey, stay um, on I, track. Stay focused. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm staying focused here, okay, um, okay, okay. but I, I went through some really chronic migraines for about eight months, uh, where every single day I had like a Richter 10 scale migraine. And, um, when people go through situations like that, um, it's, it's, demoralizing in every way, shape or form. Like I go to work and I'd only be able to work an hour and then I'd have to go home and lay down in the dark because, you know, it was, everything was impacting me. And I went to, you know, doctors and, you know, all these different things and they were just jamming me full of drugs. And uh, I mean, they rebooted my brain to where I couldn't even process or think. I was just basically like a, a, a vegetable, like getting IV transfusions done, you know, twice a week where I couldn't even communicate to my, my family. I mean, it was a really bad time. And, um, and you never feel like you're going to get that fixed. So, you know, long story short, end up figuring out what it was. It was actually bad dental work um, that <laughs> caused an inflammation on the side of my 
my face and my muscles couldn't relax ever. So they're always basically in a tense inflamed state and it pushed against a nerve that's on the side of my, my face and was causing this massive migraines all the time. And that took about, you know, eight to nine months to actually diagnose. But what was interesting about that is some of the drugs that they put me on um, at the time to try to minimize the amount of damage that the, the, the migraines were causing me from a pain perspective uh, caused me to be able, it, it shut down the part of my brain that could take complex subjects and convert it to high level. So when I'd be giving presentations, I would get in like a boot loop where I would just like repeat the same thing over and over and over again. It was really awkward. And I didn't know I was doing it. And then someone would come up to me after, I was like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, oh shit, like what did I do? You know, and so, you know, like I lost that ability to do that type of thing. So it's really interesting how like your mind, how important those two areas are from focusing on something that you have to just dive down into and do. And then to be able to massage that into something like what you do with hacks, you know, like, like getting down to the detail, building the plan out, executing, then from there, being able to build out your website and be able to get the content. And then from there to be able to do all that, I actually lost that whole ability, which was, you know, for me, horrible because I'm a public speaker. Um, and so like those types of things are, are super important. I'm glad I'm way past that, but uh, that was a horrible, horrible time. Yeah. I think the, the thing that I found as well is like, it's something that you need to you probably find this as well with coding. Like it's something you need to do regularly. So you still have that as a skill. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's something, yeah. and I actually was watching uh, a documentary the other day about Eminem and it, the guy was talking, it was uh, Rick Rubin was talking about Eminem who he's always like writing stuff down in terms of like rhymes and whatever else. And he basically says that 99% of the stuff that he writes down, he will never use. Yeah. But he does it to always work that skill to always, so that whenever he needs it, it's there. And it's that same thing with like building things like, I almost hadn't done it for so long to sort of get back into it, but now that I'm into it and now that I sort of, I'm getting the feedback of people being excited to be a part of it and everything it's going to need to sort of come along with it, as well as sort of get my head around basically the amount of people that I'm going to have to sort of onboard at the one time, because it's not something that I've ever had to do before. Cause usually it's gradual, like, you know, maybe one person a week, two person, two people a week or whatever, but it's all going to happen yeah. at the one time. And one of the coolest things about it will be, everybody will be starting at the one time too. So I think that, that'll be cool as well, but yeah, I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying building out the, the content for it, the, the training videos and just sort of trying to go beyond in the detail. Cause I think that that, that will be a big part of it, an important part of it. Um, and then yes, obviously the website that finally got done. Finally, 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 I actually spoke about this earlier on, I think. Genuinely, I, I started that website. So the guy who who did it for me, McCrum, Andrew McCrum, is one of my old clients. And we started it like whenever I used to coach him on the gym floor. And I think between me procrastinating, not knowing the content to write, me then changing how I sort of coach the people that I coach, time, any sort of shit to in between, we just had never got it done. And then obviously having the deadline and getting it done, it is up and it is live. And I am happy with, with what we put out, but it just shows that unless you have a, de a deadline with something or unless you have someone pressing you on something like shit like that can just go on forever. Cause it's not yeah, necessarily sure. technically something that I need, mm -hmm. but it's something that's always been in the back of my head. And there was potentially more of a sense of relief whenever he sent me that email saying it's live than I thought there would be. Like I had this almost like, Oh, that's a big frog eating. That's a big box ticked off the list. So it's done. It's up there. Feel free to check it out. Your you feature quite heavily on it. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was good to get good to see me. And, and it's funny because I'm not embarrassed about it. it. You know, it looks good. So, I, uh, I, I if if that would have been two years ago, I'd been like, don't put me on that website. Period. You know, like I don't want to see myself up on there. But you know, you get to see the progress and stuff like that, and get to you know, it's, it's cool to be there. So I appreciate that. There are a couple other things that need to be added once I get the stuff back from ran all the Nashville stuff like that, that stuff from going, we got the photos back as well. Some really cool images from the, yeah. the Nashville trip. So well, lots of stuff, lots of stuff has been happening. It's been a very productive, rewarding, cool, busy, great week. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad to see all the success on the hacks program. And, uh, if you don't know what that is, check out our previous podcast on that, uh, Ben essentially launched, um, a brand new program that is you know to me is much more affordable uh to the masses as well as the ability to get that one-on-one -on -one personal coaching uh, uh pieces in a framework that allows ben to kind of expand his business but also reach more people and help more people so i i think it's an awesome program i've seen the details of it and everything else is going on so it's i know it's going to be very helpful you'll be able to impact a lot more people and at the end of the day that that's what we're here for right helping other people 
being able to get them through their journey, their struggles, what they're going through in life uh, and be able to help prioritize. And I think that brings us into our first topic of, you know, how do you prioritize? Well, for one, there's, there's two topics I think we were, ta- we're talking about talking about. We actually planned this some, a little bit ahead of time this time Ish. around. But <laughs> I said, you're messy, Tim. This is what I'm thinking. And you said, this is what you're thinking. And then we went, okay, yes. we'll do both of those things. We'll do both <laughs> of those. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Um, yeah. but, but I think the biggest is, you know, uh, prioritization around health, I think, is, is very important, right? Um, to me, it's, it's, it should be the most important thing you do because it's, you only get to live this life once, right? Like, you know, there's no repeats or do-overs unless you believe in like reincarnation and come back as a dog or a cat or something like that. But at the end of the day, you know, the life that we have here, we're, we're on here for a very finite time. We're all subject to dying. Like, you know, we are, we're already going to die someday. We're already dying right now. It just depends on when that's going to happen, how it's going to happen and all that good stuff. Right. And so, you know, for me, I want to give my highest level of, uh, of chances of living a longer life and having more experiences, you know, for my kids, for my family, uh, to build successful businesses, to impact people's lives in a positive manner and leave this place in a way that is hopefully better than when I came on it. Right. Um, and so, you know, for me, I think the prioritization around health, it's funny because I always tell the story about when I first uh, started with you, Ben, and, um, you know, I had talked to, to Aaron, my wife, and, uh, you know, she had, I would said, listen, Hey, I'm, I'm looking at getting this, this personal trainer. Um, I've tried everything, you know, and, and anything in a marriage is, is a discussion, right. Um, about positives, negatives, whatever it ends up being, what you're doing in life, where you're heading, everything's a discussion, especially, you know, investments in a personal trainer. And I, I said to Aaron, like, listen, you know, I've been through all these health issues. I'm at rock bottom right now. I'm gaining weight again. I'm working out, but I don't know why I'm still gaining weight. I'm doing cardio. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And I'm not where I want to be at from a health perspective. And I don't know what to do. And uh, Aaron, you know, said back to me, hey, uh, that's awesome. Like, let's, you know, go for it. Uh, You know, hope it works out and it's successful. And that's a great thing. She also said, uh, which is funny, because when I started getting into this, she's like, is this health thing turning into like your bourbon thing? You know, like, is this going to be like, you know, all in Dave, you know, because when I go all in, I'm like all in. Um, and it definitely has surpassed more, my, more my love so for bourbon. More so than she ever could have imagined. <laughs> more so she imagined. ever imagined. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I mean, I, I think that's an important topic is, you know, investing in you so that you can be your better self, right? And, and, and that's just not better from a physique perspective. That's, you know, cardiovascular health. That's your blood work. That's you living longer. That's you feeling better about yourself, you know, personally too, like being, feeling accomplished. Like this morning, I had orange theory, which by the way, was an awesome day because it was all sprints. I love sprint days. I could sprint all day long. Brilliant. Sounds awesome. (laughs) You're going to be doing it soon. (laughs) Um, But uh, so it was a great day of sprints. I love sprints. Like it was like, I don't know, it was like 12 sprints or something like that. So I'm good at that. Um, And then I went and and I, um, my legs were a little sore yesterday. My knee was a little sore yesterday. So I skipped uh, my lower part. I still did upper body, um, but I skipped my lower part. And um, so then I did legs today. And, you know, I, it was, it was what, uh, I think I finished at 8.30 and I'd already done orange theory and I'd already done my lift. You know, like that's an accomplishment for the day. I feel rewarded. Like I've already done something for myself uh, that is bettering myself. And the rest of the day is like just adding on to awesomeness and goodness, right? And so, you know, having a podcast obviously is great. I had a board meeting earlier today, uh, this afternoon, and I'm going and getting a massage, which is going to be amazing. I've done that in like two months. So, you know, it's those things that, that help you succeed that, you know, you have those rewarding feelings, even if it's short term, but the long term impact that it has in the rest of your life is super important. I think the commitment to that is where everybody fails, right? It, it's because you, you talk to Kevin, you talk to Mike, you talk to anybody. And what we're doing here is not secret. What we're doing here is not rocket science. What we're doing here isn't for a select few. It's for everybody. But it just requires commitment and repetition of doing the same things over and over and over again to get the results that you need to. Same thing you do in your habits every day. If you eat pizza every day, you eat, drink beer and alcohol every day, you're going to reap the benefits of the, or the, the negative impacts of those, you know, down the road. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight, but in six months, you're going to gain 20 pounds. In two years, you're going to gain 40 pounds. In three years, you're going to gain 100 pounds, whatever that ends up being but you're going to reap the benefits of whatever you're doing for your body, whether it's positive or negative. And that commitment to yourself 
to do the right things to get there has to be, I would say your number one priority to do, because again, you only get to live this life once. Yeah. And I think the, the sort of the thing that I would put that down to in terms of the decisions that you make positive or negative, whatever it is, it comes down to the ownership of those decisions. And this is actually, I don't know if you've read it, but this is how I actually got introduced. I don't know if I have the book here introduced to Jocko in the first place, his book, extreme ownership. And basically it, it, talks, read it. it talks about, um, having ownership for everything that you do and how he had to have ownership over his team and whatever else. And I think that that's ultimately what it comes down to. And I sort of, I've had this conversation, I guess, a couple of times this week in terms of like people who are maybe not feeling it or like have been in a negative place or feel like they're falling back into a negative place. And it literally just comes down to, to owning those decisions. Um, and I put that tweet out earlier on. I don't know where the, the inspiration for it came from, but basically it was that you can make excuses or you can make change. And it literally comes down to you making that decision um, and to sort of, to delve back into what you were saying about prioritizing your health. I, I always, always, always put this back to you whenever you're on a plane and the fucking purple, whoever's speaking to you, the noise that comes out of the plane, they're telling you to always put your own oxygen mask on first. Like that, I feel like is how you should approach your health and fitness because the sentiment behind that is they want you to put your oxygen mask on first if the plane is crashing so that you can help other people. That is literally what it means. It's not about putting other people's on first because if you're dead, you can't help anybody. Long story short. And that's, you can be literally as extreme as that because people are in those situations. Like conversations I'm having with people is like, if I continue the way that I'm going, I am going to die. And that is literally the conversations that, yeah. that I'm having with people. Um, and the thing about the sort of, I guess, the the support aspect of it or the, the conversations, like as you said, that you have there. And, this is often a funny conversation whenever I'm on a, an initial call with someone and there's so much like seal shit that goes into it on the back end that I just have no interest in because I just like people to, I never want to feel like I've, someone feel like I've pressured them into signing up, joining, making a sale, giving me money, whatever. It needs to be their decision, whether it's now or whether it's a year down the line or whenever it is. And there's so much seal stuff if someone comes back to you with the, uh, oh, I need to go and ask my wife or I need to go and ask my partner or whatever else. And the thing that I always try and get them to get across or get around their head is number one, is that just their way of saying no? Is that just an excuse that they can just blame someone else and that's passing the buck and them not having ownership for their decision to say no, if it's not for them, that's fine. Or do they genuinely need to go and have a conversation? And if it is a conversation, they need to look at it from one side or the other. Are they asking for permission as in, are they allowed to go and do the thing or are they asking for support? And I think that they're both two entirely different things. If they're asking for support, I fully understand that because you want to be supported by the people who are around you, your partner, your family, your friends, your work colleagues and whatever, because it'll make the journey much easier for them, for you. And it'll give them an understanding of what you're trying to do and make sure that you're supported. You feel supported the entire way through your journey. If they're asking you for permission or if you're asking them for permission, if you think about it, if, if you imagine you went to ask for permission to do something that it's going to better the quality of your life, make you a better partner, a better parent, better in work, and literally li let you live healthier for longer. And the person that you ask says no. Number one, what does that say about you and your relationship? But number two, down the line, there is going to be some level of resentment that comes with that. You are just going to be in a worse position. You're not going to feel healthier. And it's just going to get to the point where like, well, I'm not healthier or I have put on weight or I still feel this way because you didn't let me. And I think that there are two entirely different things. And if you go into that conversation, I think you need to know that you are looking for either one of those and have the conversation. I also think that one of the biggest problems whenever it comes down to that is the person that they're speaking to doesn't necessarily know the severity of how the person's feeling. And it doesn't necessarily need to be from a health perspective. It could generally just be, how they feel about themselves. They're not happy in their body. They're not confident in their body. They don't feel good about themselves. They're sick of being overweight. They're sick of their clothes not fitting. They're sick of having no energy. They're sick of not being able to focus at work. But they play it down to their partner because they still need to sort of be seen as the the alpha or the male in the house if it's male to female or you know they still like they still like to feel like they still like to look like they have their shit together and they don't necessarily fully get the point across in terms of 
how bad they're feeling. And obviously, as you said, you know, whenever you spoke there, like you were straight up in terms of hitting rock bottom and, you know, things were getting worse. And I think that probably helped with, with the conversation. But I think there's so many different layers to that conversation. If you do need to go and ask for permission or ask for support or whatever it is that people potentially don't deal with. And I've seen it time and time again, and people come back to me and they're like, oh, no, the wife said no. And I'm like, like, like where do you even go with that like if you have to ask for that permission or someone's not going to support you in that journey then that's a whole other fucking shit too down the line um, but at the end of the day it's down to you to get the point across it's down to you to sort of tell them exactly how you're feeling it's down to you to take ownership for your own actions and for your decisions and it's down to you ultimately to make the change whether they say yes or no either way you're the one that's going to have to do the work and you're the one that's going to have to make the change and and I think you, what you hit on there, all those all those points are exactly where you know your mindset needs to be. And you know, my conversation with Aaron was always, you know, <clears throat> I want to do this for for me, but to also be there for the kids and everything else. I mean, I remember you know we've had conversations in the podcast where you know I was too tired to go out and play with kids. I was you know I was lethargic all the time. I had brain fog. You know, I wasn't a motivated person. Um, and, and that, you know, I was traveling all the time. I wasn't eating healthy. I was just getting worse and worse and worse. And I'd already had a number of health issues from heart surgery to removing my thyroid and all of these other issues that have, have kind of plagued me, you know, it was time for me to own, you mentioned the ownership. It was time for me to own what I was doing to myself and say, it's time for me to change that. And I think, you know, from a, a spousal perspective, um, you know, you know, or a partner perspective, you know, whether you're you're the husband or wife or partner or whatever you know that is, the support for that I think is really important because there's going to be a lot of changes that somebody has to make, and it's not a smooth sailing. You know, it's not like day one. You know everything about nutrition. Day one, you know everything about resistance training and what you should be doing. You know, like it takes time to learn a new skill. As many of you know, if you switch careers or you're learning something new in infosec, um, those things take time to learn new things and traits and, and as does this, this fitness journey, you know, and so having support from your significant other uh, is equally as important to that success. And if you're going into it and you don't have those discussions and you know, it's one of those things where you're, you're, you're meeting resistance for it. It's, it's probably going to have a negative impact on you. And those, those frank discussions you have with people, I think are, are so important because, you know, like I'll often hear from people, you know, um, I, I, I'm doing the resistance training, but you know, my wife, she just does an amazing, she's just amazing cooking. She cooks these amazing meals that are probably 2000 calories a sitting. And I just don't want to change that because I, you know, I feel like it's going to impact her cooking. And, you know, I just had a friend come to me today and said, you know, I had a discussion, you know, we had a discussion as a family and we're, instead of focusing on these massive plates of food, we're going to focus more on whole food meals and she's still going to cook the meal. Um, and we're still going to focus on whole food. And in my house, I'm the one that typically cooks. So I will be the one that typically decides, you know, what we're eating for dinner. I mean, obviously I ask everybody, but you know, it's typically whole foods. It's chicken. It's like, yeah, you want pizza, you want the burgers, yeah. right? Everybody's getting steak cooked. Cool. Yeah. Everybody's getting steak. Got it. <laughs> we're going steak again. Yeah. Steak again, dad. Yeah. Steak again. It's <laughs> seven nights in a row. No, I was kidding. Um, but you know, it, for, for the, the cooking aspects of things, you know, and, and the lifestyle of that, it starts to, to change your family in a good way because you know my kids now very much are, are mindful of what they're eating now, don't get me wrong you know halloween time frame they're pounding milk duds and raisinets and everything else that's out there or snicker bars and milky milky ways do you want to while we're on the topic talk about the cheese it incident that you had this week or i did i did have a cheese it incident this week so as, as we know i'm on a cutting phase if you listen to the previous podcast and uh i uh i definitely went overboard on uh eating cheese this one night so my my crux of my habit which is a bad habit to have is when i'm playing video games i like to have snacks while i'm eating so and and the way that i used to curb this i used to eat like you know protein chips and things like that well you know and, and then eventually i just stopped eating while i'm playing video games to kind of curb that 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 habit uh it took some time you know but definitely something that i, I enjoy doing uh well i had a box of cheez its uh sitting there and i'm like i got like 200 calories i'll, I'll be okay and I ate like half the box, which is probably like 800 calories, so or more. Um, so I definitely had a, a, a cheese it scenario. And again, so that's I mean, when I'm not perfect in any way, shape, or form. I mess up. I you know do things. You know, and, and one day, in the grand scheme of owning this whole healthy lifestyle, means absolutely nothing. In fact, that probably made that it means that I had more carbs the next day to go kill myself. Um, you know, for for a single day. So, you know, at the end of the day, owning this, changing your lifestyle and patterns of behavior. 
it, it is contagious and helps out with family members and things like that that start to see your progress and your success. But at the end of the day, you have to own your own commitment and body. Yeah, and I think that, that actually a podcast that we can that we could do a whole episode on. It is about that that getting the people that are closest to you on board, whether it's the people in work, your social situation, your family, or whatever it is. And I think it's something that if you want better for them, it's not something that you can force. The only thing that you can really do is lead by example. So if you're talking about in the household, like, and you want to change, but there's resistance and the other people are not changing, like all you can do is lead by example, show them that it can be done, show them how to do it, show them the progress and how much better you feel, and then allow them to sort of get on board with that as well. And there's, I had a conversation during the week with Chris, with, uh, Chris and uh, he was talking about how he wants to make sure that his daughter is has an understanding of nutrition. And I think that the one thing that we sort of kept coming back to was like in the, the sort of age and the generation that we're in now, we have the information and we have the knowledge and it's potentially the generation before that didn't and they did the best with what they could and they didn't really know you know, about nutrition. And it was probably just as like all this fast food, processed food was coming out. So they just thought it was fucking great and it was handy. So they didn't necessarily know that it was going to have a negative impact on people. I think that, that what it comes down to is it, it's not our fault that we are the way they are or that we're, we're wired the way that we are whenever it comes to nutrition or food. But it's sure as shit our responsibility to change that narrative, passing it down generation to generation, because there's not like we don't have the resources or the tools or the knowledge to do it. It's just a sign of neglect if we don't actually give a fuck enough to sort of change it to pass it down generation to generation. Yeah. I think the, the other thing that I actually wanted to touch on, only because I spoke to him about an hour ago, is Lou. And I know we've spoken about him before, and you see him every morning and the camera's going and get this workout done. Yeah. Lou is absolutely fucking nailing it and it's it's so great to see so i had a our um our monthly call uh earlier on and he's making great progress like the metrics everything he's making great progress we're about 12 weeks in i think um and i was like beyond the metrics like how do you feel and i could just i could just see his face i was like i feel so good i feel great like I'm in control of everything. I'm making good progress. I'm feeling stronger. He made comments about like catching himself, you know, when the lighting hits just right, whenever you're in the bathroom, you get your yeah. shirt off and you can see the <laughs> muscle definition. I'm like, that, that's what it's all about. It's about seeing those changes in yourself. And we then went on to the conversation about like time and, you know, people not thinking that they have the time and whatever else. And he says he actually finds it a lot better because he has more stuff to do in the day in terms of get his training and get his steps and get his cardio in. The time that he then spends on other tasks, whether it's work related or house related or whatever else, he's much more efficient because he's forced to be, because he's forced to be more efficient because yep. he doesn't have as much time to do those things. And it, it comes back to what I was saying earlier about how I thrive whenever I have more stuff on because I have to get the things done because I physically have less time. I think if we sort of allow ourselves more time to do things, there can be faff and about and whatever else. And he just says he feels like, He's more in control of everything. And the way I sort of put it back then was the thing that we've talked about time and time again is it's because he has taught himself the discipline to get up in the morning, go to the gym. He's taught himself the discipline when it comes to his food, to get his cardio and to get his steps in. It's discipline in every other aspect of his life. Now, I will say, he was like, one thing I'm worried about is, you know, it's been raining here the past. I was like, shut the fuck up, Lee. Go and get an umbrella and go and get the fuck out and get your steps in. He's like, okay, yeah. okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give him a shout out because he, he genuinely like it, it, from coming from like zero knowledge and zero experience, how much he's taken to everything, how much he's taken everything on board, the progress he's making and, and seeing the sort of physical and mental change in him has been has been absolutely great to see. So shout out to Lou for absolutely just going all in with everything. I think there's so many success stories that that we have seen, you know, throughout this where people were able to change you know, their lifestyle in a positive way that now form habits, right? And, you know, and, and we've, we've talked about this before on, on several occasions, it's making that your lifestyle now, like it is your habit, it is your ritual, it's what you do on a regular basis. And yes, you're going to falter. And yes, you're not going to follow that. But at the end of the day, like, you know, you know, it, it, just flip it, you know, every day you're eating unhealthy, one day you eat a salad, well, that's great. But that's not your <laughs> habit, your, your habit is eating unhealthy. So, you know, if you have a habit of eating, you know, good 90% of the time, 
And 10% of the time you eat junk or whatever because you're having a crummy day or you decide that's what you want to do for that day. Cool beans, 90% uh, increase in what you're doing is is much better than, you know, having it be the flip-flopped in the other other way being 10%. So, you know, it's it's those those things, those commitments of owning what you're doing for, from a success, success perspective that makes all of this work. And, you know, it's, again, nothing that's rocket science. It's getting your nutrition down and making sure you're not eating more calories than you expend. If your desire is to lose weight, it's getting to the gym and, you know, making it a habit of, of doing resistance training or getting your steps in or doing your cardio, whatever it ends up being. But at the end of the day, you own that. And if you don't go, you own that, right? Like you, you, you need to know, Hey, I didn't do this. So I'm going to do it tomorrow. There is no other excuse. Like, you know, it's when you start getting one day, two days, three days, four days on the road, that it's no longer a routine that you're doing. You're gone. You've you've already decided to to prioritize other things over your health and fitness. And you know, those are the things, you know, again, it's such a hard thing for us in our society to do this type of switch because when we were in our, our caveman and cave women days or in tribes building in different locations, you know, we had to forage for food, we had to build homes and houses, we had to do things that were taxing our body all the time. Now we have apps that deliver, you know, high calorie, high fatty, high sugar foods to us. Delicious, delicious, delicious food. food that, you know, <laughs> that has been designed to feed us and, and get us big. Um, and we could do that from a click of a button, you know, so the hard work that we used to have to do from an evolutionary perspective is now gone. So you have to supplement that with other things or else we deteriorate. Our body is designed to be put under stress. Our body is designed to be you know, doing resistance training and doing things that tax our body so that we can accomplish what we need to do from a, a human being perspective. We don't, it doesn't activate our DNA. It doesn't activate our, our, our uh, you know, our body in a way that allows us to, to live healthy and we start to break apart. And that's what you're seeing today with, you know, the obesity crisis that's out there with, you know, people's health ailments, cancer, heart attacks, you know, it's, it's at an all time high because, you know, we have shifted to more technology centric things that allow us to do things much more effectively and easy. And don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm happy about technology. I'm, I'm in that space. Right. But, you know, even going back, you know, 50 years ago, you did not have the obesity crisis that you had today. And, you know, things have become much easier for us in every way, shape or form. We have designed things that do things for us automatically, bigger tools that are automated, you know, manufacturing processes that are automated and less intensive on us. All of these things impact our day-to-day -day cycles of what we have to do um, as humans. And, you know, maybe down the road, evolution will change and we won't need to work out every single day. And we'll all just look like, you know, jacked, you know, muscle dudes without ever, ever having to work out again. It will be a special pill that does that. But for right now, our bodies need that or else we die. You know, we die of something, uh, whether, you know, it's not, and it's not going to be old age because if you just don't take care of yourself, you're going to die of something else. Uh, and those are the things that we can, we know we can prevent. We know we can do something. We know we can live longer, but we have to own it to go to get to that model. Yeah. And I think it, it's, it's difficult. Like it's hard, as you said, do you know what I mean? I think that, that that's what makes it so rewarding is you're doing the hard stuff to improve the quality of your life. And, you know, talking go back to this sort of 90% of the time kind of thing. And again, to talk about Lou, like last week in his check-in, there was one day that like over 4,000 calories. And he was like, didn't bank calories for it. Ended up going out for a couple of drinks, had more drinks than I had planned to, had a calzone. That was it. He owned it. But then this week, whenever he knew he had a party or an event, a family party, I think he had coming up, he knew to bank the calories and he was within his calories for the week. And that's, he owned it last week, learned the lesson and didn't carry it over the next week. And he even said earlier on the call, he was like, you know, if this had been a different situation or he hadn't been, you know, within the community or he hadn't been a client or hadn't had me or hadn't had the rest of the client group, previous experience, that would have been everything fucked. Like you just being, oh, well, fuck it. You know, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm not that sort of person, you know, maybe I'm just destined to always be overweight and unhappy. Maybe, you know, it's just, I'm just not that kind of person. And and that's again, a whole other sort of rabbit hole we can go down to in terms of like the, the identity shift that comes with the sort of change of behavior and change of habit, but it just comes down to, again, the failures that we spoke about last week, recognizing that it's a part of the lesson, learning from it and sort of moving forward and not trying to be perfect every single time. And that's literally what it comes down to. Another point that I want to touch on is I, 
I was chatting to Jill earlier on and she was very open when she was saying about like seeing everybody's progress in the discord and whatever else, like just you talking about seeing everybody's success is great and it's motivational, but it's also can be a, a point of comparison. And, and one thing that I sort of want to make sure that everybody who's listening or everybody who's in the, the sort of channel is recognizing is that everybody's at different stages of their journey. And, you know, Rob shared his transformation during the week, which is incredible. Mike shared his, there's a couple of other people who've been sharing theirs. I'm like, these people are a year into this. Do you know what I mean? It's not like this is like a fucking six week thing. Like this has time, consistency, fucking up, learning, refining, changing things, adding to things, taking things out, working where it works for you. Like there's a lot of shit that we have to overcome. There's a lot of mental hurdles. There's a lot of physical barriers, a lot of shit shoes along that way. And this comes down to why I don't necessarily like sharing before and after pictures of clients. I'm happy if you guys share them and I'll retweet them or reshare them or wherever the fuck it's going because they don't necessarily tell the whole story. And it's just okay. It's an impressive to see one picture here and another picture here, preferably in a before and after setup, not an after and before setup that is great to see like a physical change, but to me, it just doesn't tell the full story and it doesn't tell you the struggles. It doesn't tell you the, it doesn't tell you the struggles, the shit shows, the time frame. It just yep. is. Here's a picture of me whenever I was out of shape. Here's a picture of me when I'm in shape, and that's it. And I think that that that's the biggest problem about these sort of before and afters. There's no context to it, and I think ultimately, for me, it doesn't even tell the full story. If I sort of touched on it, the mic's like you know, while the physical transformation is important and while it's incredible and while it's great to see and it shows the hard work, it isn't even half of the story about the stuff that you know we've sort of had to go through and overcome. And that to me not to take away from before and after or like a physical transformation. Like I want to say, I don't give a shit about a physical transformation. Obviously I do, but right. the, it's the other shit that's more important to me. Do you know what I mean? It's the, the mental clarity. It's the, just being in a better place mentally, <laughs> more focused, everything that comes along with it that you don't or can't see in two photos. Well, I mean, that's, that's progress, right? And that's what we need to see. I think when we look at this is, is taking progress and looking at it objectively, not from a, comparison perspective. What's the progress for you? You know, yeah. what does that look like? What are things that you're doing to ensure progress? You know, if you, again, if you eat 10,000 calories a day, you shouldn't expect to lose five pounds the next day. So what are the things that, that you're doing to show progress? Whether that's, Hey, I hit my calorie goals for the day. That's progress. You know, Hey, I'm noticing a little bit of weight dropping from the scale progress. My measurements are coming down progress. Photos are looking better progress. You know, those, those getting up earlier, small... focus better on work, get more right. steps in more present whenever I'm with my family. Like there's so many different markers of yeah. progress that are beyond a picture of you in your pants. Yep. And, um, and, and Ben see me a, in a lot of pictures with my, my under, in my underpants, but, uh, um, but, <laughs> but, uh, <you> know. <laughs> I probably have hundreds of photos of you. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. I just send them yeah. every day too. It's so weird, but uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, um, the, the, the progress that, that you make and that you, you accomplish, those are the comparisons that you should be making. You know, like I, I always say the term, you know, stronger than yesterday or better than yesterday. You know, that is the truth, right? You know, are you stronger or better in some way, shape or form than you were yesterday? And if you're not, then you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Right. Uh, and and I, I've talked about this fear. Ben's talked about this fear. I don't want to be the guy at the gym that has put all this work in and I'm the exact same spot as I was a year before. Like I have to see progress. And again, that comes down to ownership. Like when I'm at the gym, that's my time to push my limits. That's my time to see how far I can take myself, you know, to a breaking point. And then the next day doing the exact same thing over and over again, you know, again, you know, when, when Ben, when ben, when ben approves my seven uh, days not, a week right. workout program here, okay. um, then oh, come on, come on, man. Nope. Not definitely not. not definitely all right not. all right That's, the, we'll discuss that later <laughs> we can discuss it <laughs> all day long i'm still not going to approve it um yet the thing i think about it is and this is sort of a i guess a mental battle i've been going through recently in the gym just because calories are low and whatever it is much harder to progress whenever you don't have the fuel or the energy to do so but it's a decision that you can make like i can decide to go in and just like half-ass my work right take the box and get it done but then that's the truth that I have to live with, that I made that decision to just half-ass things. And that half-assedness then filters into everything else. It's the same as the discipline filters into everything else. Like the decisions that you make and the narrative that you have with yourself start to 
filter into everything that you do. So if you decide that you want to half-ass your workout, you will then start to half-ass everything else you do. Whereas if you decide, you know what, fuck it, I'm here for 40 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, I'm going to really push myself and see what I can actually do and what I can get to. And if it is an extra rep or an extra pound or an extra whatever the fuck it is that you're doing, that is a measure of progress. Like that is how you progress over time. It will compound and, you know, it'll be night and day difference, six months, a year down the line or whatever it is, but it just comes down to time and consistency. And every single person that I've spoken to that has booked a call for the new program, I said, look, I am not claiming to be able to tell you anything that the internet can't tell you. I'm not a fucking magician whenever it comes to writing workout plans. Dave will tell you I'm a magician whenever it comes down to calories, but we'll talk about that at a different time. All I can offer you is a space that you can be consistent, be supported, be able to be vulnerable and put the fucking time in. And again, that's why I made it a 12 month program because yes, could we get uh, some sort of transformation in a six week beach body, booty blaster, whatever fucking program are we saying? <laughs> yes, probably, probably could. But that's not a lifestyle change. That's not behavior change. That's not identity change. That's not something that's going to serve you and the people around you and your family for the long term. And I think, if you start to sort of zoom out on things, the thing that I'm starting to see the most now, just because of the time that everybody's putting in, is the impact that each individual within the client group, within the community, is starting to have the impact the people around them. And this is how things really start to grow and escalate. It's like, okay, you know, Rob has put a year's consistent work in, Mike has put in eight, nine months, however many months it's been. And people are starting to see the change in him, not the physical change, but how he speaks, how he navigates himself, how he holds himself, how he conducts himself. And people want to be a part of that. People want a bit of that. So the influence and the impact that you can have, not only on your life and the people closest to you, but everybody around you. And then if you think six months down the line, five people around you have made the same change that you have, and then that spreads again. Like this is how we become better as a society. And exactly what you said at the start, you know, you want to leave this earth in a better fucking position than you find it in. And you know, this is a way that you can do that by physically making better decisions and taking ownership of your health, your fitness, your lifestyle to make yourself better in the long run. That's all we can ask for, right? Progress, you know, yeah. owning your, your, your things. And, you know, again, it's, it's never an easy task to do this. And what we're seeing here is not like, Hey, um, this is going to be something that you can do immediately overnight. You know, these are the small changes that you make that have long resting, lasting impacts on the rest of your life. And that's, that's again, at the end of the day, you know, I, I feel like I've been successful in it finally, you know, after many, 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 many failures, rock bottom, health issues, excuse after excuse, you name it, um, genes, I'm just a big bone person. You know, you make these excuses for yourself as you go through. And at the end of the day, I just didn't own it. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, I, I finally did. And I'm in a much better spot. I'm 40 years old. And I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my entire life, hands down, not even close. And uh, I will continue that way until I can't anymore, right? And uh, that's, I think that's the, the journey, right? That's what the experience is. It's the journey. That's what you want to push through. But again, at the end of the day, you need to make those changes. Yeah. And I think, you know, the age thing is a funny thing because people just all of a sudden have this. Once you get to a certain age, it's time to, to wrap it up. And I'm like, I, I I'm just get started. I only want to continue to get better. Like I do not, you know. Am I in the best shape I've ever been? Probably. Do I want to continue to get better? Absolutely. Like, you know, off the back of this shoot, I did probably for a while prioritize business and work over my own health and really pushing things over the past, I'm going to say six months, I guess, working with James. Like I really prioritized myself and I feel good in myself. Um, and I'm excited to continue this journey. And, you know, I sent you through like from... I guess from next Saturday, the sort of phases that I will change, like I can't wait to see in six months time or in a year's time or, you know, however long it is, like where I will be yeah. in a compounding effect from where I am now. Like I know that the repetition, the habits, the behaviors will only build and build and build to, I mean, I, I don't know, there's, to me, there's no limit to what is, is achievable. There is no limit. And, and to me, uh, I'm a good example of 40 years old, deadlifting 600 pounds, you know, being able to push myself. I can't myself wait to be 40 limits. and be able to deadlift 600 pounds. Get get like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know, and, and that number is obviously my goal, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I'm 40 years old and I'm, I'm pushing things that I've never done before. I'm pushing things that, 
you know, you don't see a 40 year old actively doing on a regular basis, you know, and um, that's, I think the coolest part about all of this is, you know, I'm just getting started. Like this is just the beginning form of Dave. And I can't wait to see where, you know, it's, it's only been two and a half years. Like that's it. You know, like where am I going to be in two and a half more years? I can't wait to see that, you know, and, and that's the, the cool part about all of this is that you're always getting some sort of progression in some way, shape or form, whether it's, you know, confidence in yourself, your ability to learn more, your ability to feel better about yourself, your ability to, you know, live longer is obviously a, a big part of the longevity aspect, but you know, all of those things culminate to how you feel as a human being. And I've never felt as good as I have today as I have before in my past. And that's, that's a huge statement, right? Like, I mean, I've lived a great life. I've done some awesome things, but the way that I feel today is the best I've ever felt in my entire life. And that's a cool feeling, right? That's a cool thing to say. Yeah, for sure. And it, it was even, it, Luke has been texting me back and forth every morning to see what weight I am, just checking in to sort of see how <laughs> progress is going. And he texted me this morning. So my weight was, I'll talk kilos because that's how I'm dealing with. My weight this morning was 89.6 kilos or something. He was like, what were you when you started? And I was like, uh, I think like 68 or 69 kilos. He was like, that's 20 kilos you put on. I was like, fucking hell. Like, so that's 45 pounds for anybody who doesn't yeah. know what a kilo is. It's like, fucking hell. Like, if you think about it, like, like that is massive in terms of like yeah. a physical change. And I was like, I wonder what I would look like with another 45 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm like. I'm like, where am I going to be at a 280? You know, like, yeah. I mean, just keep going. Like, I just, yeah. whatever. I, there'll be a point where I'm going to have to eventually stop. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm like, let's just keep building but when this. When we get you know? there, we'll deal, we'll deal with that. Then. We'll deal with that at that, that point in time, right? Right now, <laughs> keep building as big no, as I can. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, again, that's what it comes down to in different phases and breaking things down. And again, like, I'm going to run through four different phases with people in the new program. And again, that's why it's a year. But, going through those different phases and knowing what your body's capable of, like, okay, yeah, in a very short space of time, I've managed to get relatively lean, obviously not lean yeah. enough for James with the fucking water manipulation <laughs> situation, but whatever. Um, but then it's like, if I can be as dedicated and as, as work as hard as I have in this phase, like where can I be in terms of like, muscle mass in the next six months or whatever? And it's like, it's just a cool continued experiment. And I guess, you know, one of the, one of my favorite things about what we do when it comes to changing our physique is it's not something that anybody else can do for you. It's not yep. something that has any shortcuts. It's not something that it, it, it literally comes down to the work that you put in. There will be a visual, a visual representation of that. And it's not, there's not many things in life that have that, that you can hold that to you. That is only you that can do it. And I think that that's, that's one of the cool things about it. That's it. Well, what another good week on a podcast. I uh, want to thank everybody for, for tuning in this week. Always a pleasure to catch up, uh, Ben, even though we like text each other like 70 <laughs> times a day. But um, and I was complaining today a lot about my legs day, which is evil, but uh, not Fuck as bad you. as Ben. So, so here's the thing, thing. Like, like, here's the thing, like, you, you only got like one message from me. I would have sent you like 15, but I know that you're jacked with the leg stuff. So I'm not even going to like complain about to you. So. Again, though, one thing I will <laughs> say, like, while it is a real fucking pain, the well, I hope the reward down the line whenever I see you change, because legs, I feel like for myself is something that I've always struggled with in terms of like change or, you know, putting on muscle. And I have to an extent, I do have a, like two photos side by side where what my legs used to look like yeah, was like literally straight up and down, but I'm looking forward to actually having a phase where my focus is putting on muscle mass in my legs. I think that mm -hmm. that will be cool. Although three leg days a week fucking sucks, but it will be worth it down the line. Tomorrow I'm on a rest day and then I'm on leg day. So I'm, I'm lifting every day, so I don't have rest days anymore. You're but not this. fucking lifting every day. You're not <laughs> lifting every day. There is no way. There is absolutely no way. I know. I know. I just wanted to try, but uh, no, Hey, I appreciate everybody <laughs> listening to us today. Uh, hopefully you learned something new or motivated you in some way, shape or form, you know, please share us. Now uh, you, know you know how many grams of protein is in a bull's testicle. If there is <laughs> one you know thing you can do away from today. And smash with the hammer. And, yes. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, hey, hey but, uh, you know, if you, if you like what we're doing, please share us with your friends, family, folks that you know of, um, you know, the way that we, um, you know, have fun with this is getting new folks into here and seeing their successes. That's what feeds us. That's what gives us the energy. We do this for free. We do it for fun. Um, and that's the reason why we're here. So, but uh, tune in uh, for next week. And uh, this is Hacking Your Health Podcast. It is, and it has been, and it will be. Catch you next week. Good. <laughs>